Hey guys, this is Daniel back again uh, with another part for the RPG tutorial series. Um, and uh, for those of you guys who were wanting this part earlier, sorry it's taking me so long, but to be honest, I have a life. Um, <laughs> I've got other things I'm working on, you know, other little projects of mine, and to be honest, Blender's been kind of on the back burner for a while now. Um, I've been doing a lot with Java and Android programming. Um, so, but I thought I'd jump back in here real quick and see if I can help you guys out any. Um, so, basically, as you can see, I made a new little level. This is actually recycled from another project of mine. Um, but it'll work for our demo here. And you can see I've added a door over there. Um, now, obviously, the door is bigger than you really want, but that's not really a huge deal. Um, and I've also added a quick animation. It's 50 frames, and it's just of the door um, going up, and you can even see it there. Pretty simple. Um, but what we want to do is lurk, work on event management which is something that all video games have to use, um, whether that's um, so that a door knows when to unlock um, or when to trigger enemies to come spawn in, uh, things like that. All of these are important um, in video games as far as the storyline is concerned. So let's uh, start off. We're just going to take something simple, uh, sort of like you'd see in a Tomb Raider game or a similar um, RPG strategy game or puzzle game. Um, we're just going to make a player have to roll a ball from over here on this field onto the road, and that'll open up our uh, our door. Okay. So to do that, first we need the ball. We're just going to create an icosphere, um, isosceles triangle sphere, whatever you want to call it. Uh, scale it by two. Whoops, not by the center point though. Hold on. Scale by two. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna add something real quick here, just to make it easier for you guys. Real quick here. Screencast keys. Okay, so this will make it so you can see everything that I type out and do over here in this corner. All right, um, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a material. And we're just gonna give it a you new know, one. We'll call it ball. Um, and actually, I've already created a, this material, so we're just gonna go ahead and use it. Oops, not dirt. Ball. There we go. Go ahead and put it over here in the grass field. There we go. Uh, and go ahead and give it a rigid body physics type. And then under collision bounds, we're gonna do sphere. There we go. And let's give that a shot real quick just to see how it works. So there we got our little ball over there. We should be able to bounce into it and push it around. There we go. So it's pretty straightforward that way. All right. Now we need to figure out a way to trigger that um, door. And the easiest way to do that and the way that we, we're going to use is to use what's called a tr uh, sensor mesh or a trigger mesh. Okay, and this is the way it's done in uh, all the Quake games um, and Quake derivative games and a lot of games actually. We're just going to go create a, a cube. Okay, and move it over onto the road, and we're just going to scale it uh, by x and by y to scale it until it's roughly the size. Okay, we want it to be actually a little bit smaller that way it doesn't falsely get anything when we're good there. Okay, and of course now if we play the game just like normal we're just going to run into it. It's just like any other obstacle. Um, but obviously we want it to be a sensor. So instead of static, uh, when we have it selected, instead of static, go to sensor. Now when we run into it, we actually go right through it as though it was like water. And in fact, water a lot of times is used uh, for the sensor, uh, is using a sensor um, object type. Because of the fact that you can pass through it, but you still know when you're in it, so you can change to like a swimming animation or something like that, or change the gravity of the scenes so that you're not falling as quickly because you're underwater. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna add a sensor here. Okay. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it's easier. Add sensor. We're gonna do the touch sensor. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. Touch sensor. Okay. Material ball. So whenever the ball is touched, we're gonna have it do something. And in this case, we're gonna connect it to the animation on the cube uh, the piece there. So go ahead and add an actuator here. Action, play, and then choose cube action. Okay, or whatever action you've named your animation there. Uh, do your start frame and end frame, so 0 to 50 on mine. And now, um, just for simplicity's sake, we're actually just going to put it right here so it drops straight on. And as soon as it touches, it raises up the, the um, door there. Okay. So let's put it back over here and let's give this a shot and see, make sure it's working like we want. When we roll this on, it should open the door. And it does, there we go. Um, now of course in a real example, once it rolls back off of the pressure plate or whatever you're using, the trigger plate, 
you're not going to want it to stay open, you're going to want it to close again. And the way we do that is really easy. Uh, we just change this from play to flipper. Okay. Um, when it's touching, it's giving it a one signal or a true signal. And the flipper basically says if it's true, tell it to go up. If it's false, then play the same animation backwards. So I'm just going to keep the camera over here for now. And if we run over to it, push it in, it goes up until the ball comes out of it, and then it goes back down again, which is where you want. So that's just a simple, uh, simple way to do it. Uh, in our next, um, here we go. In our next video, I'm going to talk about some interaction um, with some other things. Uh, maybe get into UI. I'm not exactly sure, but that's just a simple introduction to events. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks.